Greetings, ENCO residents, mentors, and directors. My name is Chris Robinson. I'm the Clinical Resource Director for ENCO. I'd like to take a moment to discuss residency documentation, required forms and submissions. Presentation Overview. Review the basic functionality of the ENCO Tracker Forms tool for both residents and mentors slash directors. Identify the required forms that must be completed throughout the course of the residency. Identify the responsibilities of the resident and mentor slash director regarding record keeping. Describe the ENCOPE staff review process for receiving forms submitted via ENCOPE Tracker. And last, demonstrate how to run and review the residency status report. By the end of this presentation, I'm optimistic you'll be able to answer the four questions on the right-hand side pretty easily. I assure you they're some of the most common questions asked of the ENCOPE staff. The first step to access all these forms is, of course, signing into the ENCOPE Tracker tool. To log into ENCOPE Tracker, residents can visit ENCOPETracker.org, while mentors and directors will access ENCOPETracker.org forward slash admin. Don't worry, it'll clearly show whether you're at the resident or the mentor slash supervisor login screen. And if you accidentally go to the wrong one, just take a peek at the bottom and you'll see a yellow button that lets you change to the opposite login screen easily. The Forms tool exists in different places, whether you're a resident or a mentor slash director. In the case of residents, it'll be towards the top right-hand side. While mentors and directors, you can find it on the middle left-hand side of your interface. And something you might be familiar with already, but I just want to review quickly, is the notion that both residents, as well as mentors and directors, have forms that they're each uniquely responsible for. For example, residents on a quarterly basis will submit the evaluation of the residency program, the evaluation of the residency mentor, and a clinical track activity submission, or a research track update slash final submission, if you're done with your capstone research project. Residents also must submit once during the course of their residency a professional activity, as well as the graduate evaluation of master's level KHEP education, measuring the overall quality of their academic program prior to enrolling in residency. Mentors and directors, they're responsible for quarterly submissions of the evaluation of the resident. And on a one-time basis, competency forms, for which there are presently seven orthotic and five prosthetic, a technical competency form, and also the director in particular must submit the final evaluation of the resident by the director form. So if you're the resident, make sure that you're linked correctly to your director so that they can access and complete that form for you. I'd also like to share a couple of important considerations. Remember that quarterly forms are due no more than 30 days after the final day of the residency quarter, and late submissions may result in the residency program being extended, which could negatively impact exam eligibility or go beyond the employment contract dates. So make sure you stay on top of things. Also, competency forms should be filled out by the mentor or director as soon as the resident demonstrates competency for a specific device. Remember, the resident cannot transition to indirect supervision, allowing the resident to be in a different physical location than their mentor, unless competency has been documented in Tracker and submitted to ENCOPE. Now, given the sheer number of forms, it would probably be helpful to identify when each form is due. And that's quite easy to do, thanks to the resident timeline report, which allows you to generate a report for either a 12 or 18 month residency. And it also can account for common program variations. For example, single discipline orthotic residencies versus dual discipline residencies where you do combined O and V. And it also can account for the unique requirements, whether you're in the research track or the clinical track. There's a link at the bottom of the page, which I recognize is a little bit long, but don't worry. You could just go to ncope.org and type in the resident timeline report into the little hourglass and it'll load right up. Next up, I'd like to discuss record keeping requirements. It's important to recognize that the resident and the mentor slash director should maintain independent records of completed forms. Remember that ENCOPE is the accrediting body, but the educational institution 
is the residency site. And the faculty for that educational institution, that's the mentors and directors. So the resident and their mentor and director should be aware of what forms have been completed without having to contact ENCO. So stay on top of things. And the best way to do that, download a PDF copy of the form once it's completed and store it in a secure, cloud-based storage system. On that note, let's say you're the resident and you're trying to get a copy of the evaluation of the resident form that was filled out by your mentor. Those are emailed to you, so it's okay. But please do remember that ENCO Tracker does not store copies of previously completed forms. And once those forms are completed, the ENCO staff is going to perform a form verification. It's important that everybody recognize each form is reviewed by an ENCOPE staff member and may require up to two business days to document. So while ENCOPE Tracker is technologically advanced, an actual person must audit the form to confirm accuracy and satisfactory completion. And this requires considerable time and effort, given that we have hundreds of active residents at any given time. But upon successful verification, the ENCOPE staff will update the resident's permanent record on file. And a question we're often asked, especially towards the end of the residency, is if an individual can verify that a form was truly received by the ENCO staff. Recognize that the ENCO staff relies on the same tool and data as the resident and the mentor slash director. This tool is known as the Resident Status Report. And I'm pleased to say the Resident Status Report can be accessed by the current mentor or director and resident anytime by simply selecting the Forms tool that we discussed earlier in this presentation. Then all you need to do is scroll down and select Resident Status Report. But do remember, any form received in the past two business days will likely not be reflected on the status report. So please rerun the status report again if recent forms are not reflected as received. Now let's discuss viewing the status report. Status reports are automatically emailed to the resident and their current assigned mentor. And the status report will include information about the form submitted by both the resident as well as their mentor slash director. Fields such as your name, resident ID, contact email address, and where you attended OMP school are going to be listed. On that note, you'll also see NA or not applicable listed in some fields. So in this example, the fifth quarter is identified as not applicable for clinical track activities. Given that they're only doing a 12-month residency with four quarters, that makes an awful lot of sense. On that note, if a form has been completed more than two business days prior and it is not reflected on the report, the resident may manually submit it for review by attaching it to the NCOPE staff contact form. If you visit ncope.org and click on the Contact Us link, at both the top and bottom of our website. Pick either one. You'll be able to send this file as an attachment and we'll get it reviewed and update your permanent record accordingly. And last but not least, I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope you found this brief presentation helpful in understanding how forms work as they relate to the ENCOPE residency